Well, hello everyone. First off, I, on this video, I want to give a huge, huge shout out to both Jackson Wheat and James R.J. Downard for helping me with this project by looking over my script to make sure it is um, factually accurate. Now, those of you who have been keeping track of my videos knows this is my 69th video. Now, what crazy idea could I do in honor of this video with the mature sense of humor we all know I possess? The planet Uranus? No, no, that isn't big enough. Um, Homo erectus? No, it really doesn't stand up on its own when compared for the number. I know, I know. How about the biology of sexuality? That is perfect. We will all look at the kinky, weird things nature has to show us. So sit back, grab your tissues, as this is going to be a wild ride for everyone. The first part of nature I am going to look at is one that we have all seen. The male garter snake will, at times, pretend to be female. Now, how or why would a male snake do that, and what happens when they do that? Now, for the answer to that question, I just want to say, if you have one, grab your snake, pet it on its head, and show it the love it deserves. Get your head out of the gutter, audience! I was just talking about the animal. Jeez. You guys are all sick-minded. Uh, oh well, but the garter snake, when it wakes up from hibernation, is usually pretty sluggish, so what better way to warm up and get your blood pumping than to have some fun? But there are countless other males out there, and you are small and weak to fight for one. To fight one. Well, here's the solution. You pretend to be a female, of course. You see, when the snake wakes up, they're going to look for a mate. They form what are called mating balls. Although they only form and they only form one and not two. But what this does is when all the other males um, are fighting for the one male who is smaller, they warm up faster, thus they can get moving and grooving with another female later. While all the other males think they got it on with a female. So yeah. Snakes are weird. Now, for this next animal, if you want to take a good look at it, you have to get all wet and gasp for air. Also, just so you know, it may smell fishy and can look funny as well. But that is to be expected as that is normal. Okay, audience, you really got to keep your head out of the gutter. I'm talking about a clownfish. Jeez. See, when something happens to the female of the species, a male will then step in and fill the role of the female. See, this is because clownfish are actually born male, and they will change to female from social conditions which does make them somewhat unique among the tessellate fish, fishes. Now, a tessellate is part of the infraclass tessellosti, which is from the class Actinopaturgi. And I am sorry for any biology majors who are watching this and are cringing at my pronunciation. I am sorry. Now, this makes their reproduction to sequential hermaphroditism. Now, according to an article from the NCBI titled Sex Change in Clownfish, Molecular Insights from Transcriptomy Analysis, it says, In territorial harmonic species, sex change is socially mediated and is more common in protagonisms species. One interesting exceptions 
exception are the clownfish, which are pejoratives, monogamous, and sex change seems to be controlled socially, i.e. male does not change sex when obtaining a certain size, but only after female disappearance. It has been suggested that sequential hermaphroditism in reef habitats improves adaptation, increases survival rates, and enhances reproduction. However, with our understanding of the molecular pathways underlying the reproductive processes, particularly sex change in hermaphrodites, is very limited. Yeah, so all I can say about that is, that is one hell of a fish story. Okay, so far, I've had you grab your snake and get all wet. Well, what can I look at next? Ooh, ooh, I know, I know. How about some cock? Everyone loves cock, right? I know I do, as it is so good to put in your mouth and taste so good when it's all juicy. Okay, okay, I'm talking about a chicken here. What did you think I was talking about? Oh, God, I got, I got a dirty-minded audience. See, this is what happens... This is the, the chickens can become a cock, or I guess the more commonly accepted term is rooster. See, this happens when a chicken has something happen to its ovaries, or it gets a hormonal imbalance. See, this happens from androgens, as that is what makes the hen develop into a rooster. See, when this happens, chickens will then start to grow waddles like a rooster and start acting exactly like you would expect a rooster to act. So yeah, chicks can be cocks. Now, I just wish I had one so I could show my cock off to the world. I'm talking about a rooster. God, I am not doing porn on my channel. Get your head out of the gutter, people. Well, I will say this much for our next segment. I just want to point out that every, you know, one in this species lays an egg. See, this is because this species is all female. I guess you can, I guess they all thought boys had cooties or something, I don't know. But in all actuality, I am talking about the New Mexico whiptail. Now, what is that, Cap? I can hear you asking. Well, it's a species of lizard that is entirely female. They reproduce asexually. And because of that, they are an entirely female species because there is no male chromosomes introduced during reproduction. So they are all born female. See, this is because the whiptail is parthenogenic. That means that all female embryos are in fact fully developed with a full set of chromosomes. See, according to Peter Bauman, a molecular biologist at the Stowers Institute for Medical Research, the lizards of this particular genus, known as Aspidocilus, a hybridization event. Now, what does um, known as a is a hybridization event? Now, what does that mean? Well, that would mean that the female of the species left all the males high and dry for another species. I guess you know they just weren't happy and just decided to uh, to show the men a lesson. That then made the Aspidellus hydrozygos and able to reproduce asexually. Now the thing about asexual reproduction is that it does make them more vulnerable to genetic and environmental issues. Now why would that be? See, that is because animals that reproduce asexually are genetically identical and thus are basically clones of each other. But... I know one good thing about them all being in the female population. They never have to worry about going limp with reptile dysfunction. But thank you everyone for watching this video on just how crazy the world of nature actually is. All sources will be linked down below as well as RJ's and Jackson Wheat's channel. Thank you again for watching. This is Cat Brony, signing out.